Intermittent fasting is so much more than just not eating for a little bit. In fact, what you have before, during, and after your fast is crucial if you're looking to maximize your weight loss and wellness goals. So today I'm showing exactly what to eat or drink before, during, and after an intermittent fast to maximize your results in today's video. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition human performance. And today's video is sponsored by Element. More on them in a bit. Okay, so first we're gonna start with the first part of the day, which is really kind of like the middle of your fast. So from when you wake up to when you go to break your fast. The most important thing we need to focus on here is hydration and getting enough water. When we're intermittent fasting, it's really easy to lose a lot of water and a lot of sodium that can cause us to get dehydrated and get an electrolyte imbalance. This is why you might notice that you pee a lot during the fast. And it's because our insulin level dips down during the fasted state, which tells the kidneys to release that water and release the sodium. So we need to replace what was lost during the fast in order to prevent things like the headaches or the muscle aches or the lower energy that can happen with intermittent fasting. So throughout the whole day, it's good rule of thumb to aim for drinking about half your body weight in ounces of water. Now, if you're exercising or if you live in a really hot environment, then you might need a little bit more. But just to give you an example, if you weigh about 150 pounds, you want about 75 ounces of water. Now, I found the most success with kind of front loading water earlier in the day. You don't want to be cramming it in toward the end of the day. Otherwise, you're going to have to pee throughout the middle of the night. You're going to wake up. It's going to disrupt your sleep and that'll actually work against your weight loss goals. So I like to aim for getting about a third to a half of my daily water intake takes during that first part of the day during the fast. Now you can also have other liquids like coffee and tea during the fast, but if they're caffeinated, I would not count them toward your daily water intake. And how you take your coffee or tea depends on your goals. If you're primarily looking to maximize on gut health, you really wanna make sure you're sticking to unsweetened or black coffee. In fact, some people might do best with just water during the fast if gut health is the primary goal. But if your goal is weight loss or just general health, you could get by with adding in some things into your coffee. It can be a little tricky, I do have a full video breaking it down. I'll have all the details linked right up here. Make sure you check that out if you are going to be adding things into your coffee or tea. Something else that I like to have during the fasted state in the first part of the day, right before I break my fast, is either apple cider vinegar or lemon. In fact, I use the apple cider vinegar sipper or ACB sipper from my complete intermittent fasting bundle programs. And having this about 10 to 15 minutes before the first meal can help to stabilize blood sugar levels so you don't get as big of a spike when you go to eat. So I usually dilute about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar with about eight ounces or more of water. Now, the last thing you wanna make sure you're getting during this stage of the fast are electrolytes. This is crucial. We talked about water, but electrolytes are just as important because we also lose electrolytes during the fast. And if we drink a lot of water, but we don't replace those lost electrolytes, that's when we can get into issues of hyponatremia. And that can cause things like the headaches or the lower energy levels later in the day. You can use a high quality salt or you can use a really great electrolyte company like today's sponsor, Element. Element is an electrolyte company that was specifically created with intermittent fasting or lower carb eating in mind. It actually has the sodium, the magnesium, and the potassium to help replace those lost electrolytes that were lost from the fast. Something unique about Element is that it also doesn't contain any sugar, making it a much better option for a weight loss goal. I usually have one to two elements per day. I'll have a second one if it's a particularly hot day or if I was particularly active, not a hard workout. But I bring Element with me everywhere I feel so much better when I'm properly hydrated. Like I recently went to San Diego, brought it with me when we went to the zoo, and then also had it with me at the pool, and I just felt so much better, so much more energized. And right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serve packets free with any Element order. This is a really great way to test out all eight flavors, so you can get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash autumn. This is only available through my link, so make sure to check out D R I N K lmnt.com forward slash autumn. I'll also have the link down in the description below. Okay, next we move on to the eating window. So now we've broken our fast and it's time to eat. This is where I think a lot of people make the biggest mistakes because unfortunately in like various fitness magazines or a lot of YouTube videos online, to be quite honest, it's been told that you can eat whatever you want when you go to break your fast and still achieve your goals. That is simply just not the case because one of the reasons why intermittent fasting can be such a great weight loss tool is because it results in those lower insulin levels during during the fast that allows the body to turn on fat burning. Now, if you then go and break your fast with really insulin spiking foods, really refined food products, then this can reverse a lot of the progress that you just made and result in either a weight loss plateau or even weight gain. This is why I personally focus on protein, fat, and fiber during the eating window. These are low glycemic load, which means that they aren't going to cause a really big insulin spike and instead emphasize stable blood sugar levels, making it more compatible from a weight loss perspective. Depending on the activity level and state of insulin resistance, 
Some people can also include some medium or higher glycemic starches, but definitely this is one that you'll either want to limit or remove if weight loss stalls. Now, protein is the most important thing to be focusing on during the eating window if you want to achieve a weight loss goal. If you're having three meals during the intermittent fast, most people are going to do great with about four ounces cooked protein. Although if you're someone who is having a two meal structure, then it's really important to increase your protein further to about six ounces cooked at each meal. Now this is probably a lot more than 99% of people are eating and protein is really satiating. So it's easy to under eat on protein. So if you're unsure on what this actually looks like in terms of how much protein you should be eating, I have a really easy visual video that you should check out right up here. Some great meal examples that really emphasize high quality protein while minimizing those insulin spiking starches and sugars include things like a Greek yogurt bowl with strawberries and nuts or low sugar protein smoothie or a salad with salmon and sauerkraut and avocado or a breakfast burrito wrapped in a coconut wrap with eggs and salsa. There's so many amazing delicious meals that I'm just like drooling about thinking that you can make. And if you want some ideas of what you can make with intermittent fasting, I have a free download with 10 free recipes that you can check out. I'll have that linked down description below if you guys want to grab that. Okay, then when you go to start your fast again, so this is after your last meal, it's the evening or early evening time, we need to switch our focus because yes, we do want to have some water, but you actually don't want to have a ton of water. Remember, you want to front load most of your water in the earlier part of the day with the fast and then during the eating window and then a little bit of water in the evening so you don't wake yourself up throughout the night to have to use the restroom. A great tool that I like to use for myself and a lot of my clients if you struggle with having the urge to snack at the end of the day is mint tea. Fresh mint tea can act as a natural appetite suppressant, tastes really great and it doesn't break a fast. During this time, I personally also like to make sure I take my magnesium supplement, which will not break a fast, but can help to support deep and high quality sleep. And I really can't stress this further, but I personally try and make sure that I don't have any liquids about 30 minutes before bed, because this is one of the most common things I hear as nutritionists when I meet with people is that they wake up throughout the night to have to use the restroom and it really does impair your sleep quality. So for that reason, I personally have a pretty strict 30 minutes before bed, no liquids rule. Now, if you want to check out some more ideas on what you can have during the eating window to help support your goals, you can check out this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.